Welcome back, everyone. We uh, have been working on muscles, and uh, the first couple videos that I made, we went over muscle structure, and so I have a uh, handout 10A and 10B. What's up here is 10B that kind of shows us what the uh, muscle is made out of. Now, what I'm going to do next is we're going to move right to handout 10C, which is actually this same picture. It's just uh, blown up. So this uh, is handout 10C. But if you look at it, it really is just this other picture. But what we're going to focus on is the cell, the muscle fiber. So handout 10C shows us a zoomed in muscle fiber. And that's because we need to understand what certain structures in the muscle fiber do. And so uh, let's examine this a little bit uh, closer. And we will uh, name some of these parts and pieces. So. Remember that a muscle cell isn't really called a cell. It's called a muscle fiber. And these muscle fibers uh, are a collection of cells that have all fused together. Now, a muscle fiber is a cell. It's just a collection of embryonic cells. So it does still have things like a plasma membrane, you can see these little yellow sausages are mitochondria, all right? The little webbing is a variation of the endoplasmic reticulum called sarcoplasmic reticulum. So we're just going to name some parts and pieces of the muscle fiber, all right? So the first thing is that our plasma membrane is not called a plasma membrane. It's called a sarcolemma. And so it says, uh, I wrote here, the sarcolemma is the muscle cell membrane. Now, the reason why it's not just called a plasma membrane is because it has a unique property. It can carry nerve impulses. So nerve impulses are going to travel through your nerves to your muscles, and then the nerve impulse is going to jump from the nervous system to your muscular system in order to tell your muscles to contract. So this action uh, potential or uh, nerve impulse is going to jump from the nerves to the sarcolemma of the muscle cell. And the sarcolemma, the plasma membrane, can spread that uh, nerve impulse. So it says it carries nerve impulses. Nerve impulses are called action potentials to the muscle contractile proteins. So the sarcolemma is going to carry electricity, in other words, a nerve impulse down that cell. Now what's kind of interesting about this is the sarcolemma has these structures called T tubules and T tubules are going to be uh, little tubes of the plasma membrane of the sarcolemma. But what these T tubules do is they dive down into the muscle fiber. So all these blue tubes are these transverse or T tubules. Now, what I wrote is that uh, transverse tubules are invaginations or tunnels into um, the cell, and they're made up of sarcolemma. So I just wrote invaginations in the sarcolemma, and they quickly spread that nerve impulse, the electrical signal, uh, throughout the entire muscle fiber. So just imagine electricity flowing through the sarcolemma, they hit these T tubules and they go down the T tubules. And then from the T tubules, they can spread really quickly through the entire muscle fiber. And that's going to uh, allow the muscles to contract. So a muscle cannot contract 
unless it gets a signal from the nervous system. So the signal from the nervous system arrives, travels down the sarcolemma, down the transverse tubules, and then uh, triggers the muscle contraction of the cell. Now, the third thing that I want to mention are these uh, structures that are related to endoplasmic reticulum called sarcoplasmic reticulum. And sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, I just wrote, they're similar to uh, regular smooth endoplasmic reticulum, but they have a completely different job. They're going to store calcium. So remember I told you that calcium is needed for muscle contraction. Well. The calcium is stored in this webbing of sarcoplasmic reticulum. And uh, really what happens is this electrical charge that's coming from the nervous system traveling through the sarcolemon transverse tubules releases calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then the calcium flows through the muscle fiber and causes the muscle to contract, all right? So I just wrote that calcium ions that are needed during muscle contraction. Here in an upcoming handout, we're gonna actually see exactly what calcium does. But for right now, just think of calcium as that trigger to cause a muscle contraction. And it's this electrical signal traveling through the muscle fiber that's going to allow for this calcium to be released. Okay, so uh, that pretty much takes care of handout 10C. Um, I'm planning on doing the other two handouts in class after our test, so uh, stay tuned and we will wrap up chapter 10 uh, following our test. So hope you're having a good day and I'll see you soon.